Welcome, I am Azuli, Priestess of the Dead. Sit, and I will show you the events that have shaped your destiny. Their leader was called Red Jack, and they were known as the Brethren. They sent fear before them and left death in their way. But in the end, they were betrayed. Captain! A ship is approaching! Jack became only a legend for 17 years. Now it begins again. The things I have shown you are past as for the present. Somewhere this day, there is a man who has decided it is time for you to die. His name is Nicholas Dove. Find him and bring me his head. The place is here. It is called Lizard Point. I have shown you the past and the present. When we meet again, Nicholas, perhaps I will show you the future. What are you doing here? I figured you'd be up way past midnight. Yes, and I'm your brother, so what? Doesn't mean I have to like it. I don't like being responsible for you. You wander around while I do all the work. You think this farm runs by itself? I work hard here and I still have nothing to show for it. We don't have any money. My wife ran away with that blacksmith. It would be nice if you could help out every now and then. There's a pirate ship at the docks right now and the captain is in the bar. Maybe he would give you a job. hoping to run into you this evening. Yes, but you know the saying, all dressed up with nowhere to go. It's not where I go, Nick, it's who I go there with. But I really can't think of leaving. I have too many troubles to deal with here. I'm sure you've heard my father died. Don't be. He was as mean as two snakes and it finally caught up with him. But he's left me in quite a bad situation. My father's business dealings were held together with promises he never intended to keep. Now that he's dead, everyone knows that they aren't going to get what he promised. So, they all want their money back. 
from me. He didn't even pay his taxes. Your farm is the most valuable property I own. I don't have a choice unless you can help me. Well, just answer me this. Have you ever thought of leaving Lizard Point to make your fortune? What do you think about being a pirate? Before you answer, let me explain. There's a ship here, a pirate ship. I know the captain, sort of. He recently lost some men in an, well, an accident. In one good season of pirating, you could make more money than either of us need. What do you say? Oh, I'm so glad you agree. Now, you'll have to impress the captain. He's a hard case, but I'm sure he'll like you. I'll be here for a little while longer, and you can come back if you want. The pirate captain is in the bar right now if you want to talk to him. I promised I wouldn't tell, but that bartender just bought 12 bottles of rat poison from me. Either he's planning to poison the whole town, or he's got a great many rats. Either way, I wouldn't eat the food or drink the ale if I were you. Good evening to you. The name is Anvil. I've seen you around town. What do you do for a living? Well, I suggest you get started on a career of some kind. I highly recommend blacksmithing. Nothing the girls like more than big sweaty men. Between you and me, I've had my eye on Elizabeth. But I must say, she seems to have a crush on you. You're a lucky man. Have you talked to her lately? Then you don't need me to tell you how lucky you are. Then get it for her and you'll both be happy. As I live and breathe, it's Nicholas Dove, out and about after dark. I'm surprised that brother of yours let you leave the house. What can I do for you? You must be looking to walk on the wild side. Come on in. There's someone I want you to meet. Well, here you are. Inside the best bar in Lizard Point. What do you think? Sad to say you're looking at it. Well, there was a man out back earlier, trying to steal some, uh, food from me. Hit me up for a free beer, too. Then charged at me like a wild animal when I said no. I shot at him, and he ran away. Other than that, it's been quiet. No need to thank me. I was just speaking with my friend Justice here. He's a famous sea captain. I'll introduce you if you like. Nick Dove. Meet Lantern Justice. Oh, you're a local. Maybe you can help me. One of my men has gone AWOL. His name is Lyle, and the only place I can figure he might have jumped ship is on this island. Have you seen him? Yeah, he looks like a big stupid oaf, but he's the best swordsman I've ever seen. If you see him, please tell him that if he doesn't come find me, I'm going to wring his big neck. Now tell me, what is your occupation? I see. I might be able to offer you a job that would get you off this island. Privateering. I'm short-handed because some of my men were killed in Ireland. I almost never hire men with no experience. I can't afford to take risks in this business. However, you've come highly recommended by a certain young lady who lives in town. Usually it's a matter of experience, and I especially need men who can fight. We work for the king, we 
capture French ships. We put the ships out of commission as our patriotic duty and keep whatever we find on them as our reward. But not just any man can become a privateer. I need proof that a man can handle any situations we might encounter. An acid test to see what he's made of. Oh, really? Well, what can you do that's useful? For one thing, I need men with swords who have fighting experience. You would have to gain both of those things. We meet people every day who are far more vicious than that shark in the cove. If you could kill that shark and bring me proof, I might consider hiring you. That's three things you need and you have until sundown. According to my weatherman, there's the storm coming the like of which hasn't been seen on this island for 50 years. We need to sail as soon as possible. Now, leave me alone. I'm busy. Hello. Never mind that. I know who you are. Do you like fish? Me too. I'm the fishmonger. I catch fish. I chop off the heads. I love it. But didn't anyone warn you about me? They say I'm crazy. Look at me. Do I look normal to you? But the truth is, I just chop up fish. Oh, you'll have to go talk to the blacksmith. He's the only one who can make weapons. No, I'm a pacifist. I'm sure you can find a brawny pirate who could help you with that. I hate sharks. Always eating the best fish. They just don't know when to quit. I heard you talk to the pirate captain. I'll help you if I can. What do you need? I can help with that. I'll give you some chum. Fish heads and innards. Best thing to attract a shark. And you can't kill it until you get it to come close. Do you want it? These fish heads are really something special. I wouldn't give them to just anybody. Good luck. I've got a lot of fish to chop here. I'll talk to you later. What's on your mind? I'd love to oblige you, lad, but there's a seven-day waiting period. Word around town is that you don't have that long. Better find a weapon that's already forged. If you need a plowshare or some horseshoes, you come see Anvil. I'm afraid I won't be able to offer much help otherwise. What can I do for you, Nicholas? No lad, wrestled an alligator once back home, but I guess that's a little different. I'm new to town myself lad, the only place I know that pirates go is that cove around the way. Now, I've got to get back to work. 
Those pirates don't want to wait on the weapons they ordered. Come here, you scummy little rat. I want to ask you a question. You ever see anyone in those woods up there? Like rich people walking home from work with bags of gold, maybe? Scummy little rat, I think. Who are you? The village idiot, perhaps? It's been all of two weeks since I robbed somebody. I must steal, and quickly. What have you got in your pockets? Maybe I'll just beat you unconscious and check your pockets myself. Leave the man be, boy. He has done you no harm. Captain Justice will have your hide if he finds you stealing from British citizens. Mr. Law and Order saves the day. Cross here, he's my conscience. Speaking of, you haven't seen any other pirates around, have you? You scrawd. I'll wring your neck. Never mind. You're too scruffy to waste time on. I certainly hope Captain Justice gets his business done and sails out of here tonight to somewhere that the pickings are a little richer. Say, who's that fine dish in the pink dress? You know her. Why? Is she your girlfriend? No, never mind. I'll go ask her if she has a man. I bet when she sees me, the answer will be no. I think I'll just go introduce myself as soon as me and Cross make our last trip out to the ship. So long, Scrubby. Have you been trained to fight? Perhaps you could get Lyle to help you. He is a master swordsman. We think he jumped ship here. Maybe he's down at Pirate's Cove. I predict the weather that affects the Marana. I know when storms are coming and the direction they will take. There is a very bad storm coming to this island. Many things will change in the wake of this storm. Maybe it would be best if you left this place. Indeed, I do. You must pass the test as they have been set out for you. The best help I can give you is the advice to watch your back when Bowen is near. We will talk more later. You have things to do. Goodbye. Stood in this place. 
So the time has finally come for you to pick up Red Jack's sword. <laughs> if I had to wait any longer, I swear you'd have found a pile of bones down here. They call me Patch. On account of this... Patch. You picked up on that, didn't you, son? That I am, my perceptive young friend. Interested in the sea yourself, I'll warrant. Well, that's fortunate for us all. Now shut up and listen. You talk far too much, and I've got no time to spare. Now I know your mind jumps around like spit in the frying pan. But try to stay with me, otherwise you'll be dead by sunup. You've heard of Red Jack, right? Of course you have. Your ma probably told you that story in your cradle, seeing as how he was from right here in Lizard Point. The greatest pirate who ever lived. Well, this all began 20 years ago, when Red Jack formed the Brethren of the Coast. They were the most fearsome group of men ever assembled on one ship. Every year, the Spanish gather up the year's worth of treasure they've stolen from the natives. They take it to the walled city of Cartagena, and there it sits, in the underground of Fonts, until the Armada comes to take it back to Spain. Red Jack found a way to steal it all, a way so clever and secret that it just couldn't fail. you may not know. He told his men, this high spirit won't rest until I know who betrayed the brethren. Every loyal one among you return to this island in 17 years for your share of the treasure. My share will go to the man who discovers the traitor. Until that day, my treasure is cursed, and any man who even dreams to steal it will be destroyed. Now leave me, and when I'm gone, put me where I can watch my ship and hear the waves. So Red Jack spoke, and then he died. Now what it Bastard, aren't you? The treasure's still right where he left it, son. The ship went down just offshore of that island, and there she sits. Not far away, boy. Not far at all. That's the problem. To this day, no one knows. A few a miserable few. Pity have tried, boy. They never come back. Don't really know anymore, son. It was never on any map. A man like me has to keep moving, boy. Now listen, I've told you all I can remember about Red Jack. The only other thing I know for certain is that you won't solve your problems here. You've got to move on. Get out in the world.
scared you, didn't I? Well, at least you didn't fall on the ground and cry like a little girl. Curse you, Thick Skull. Why are you sneaking around in the dark? I should kill ye. You trying to steal me boat? I'm called Shoeless Lyle. I've been a fortnight now with nothing to keep me alive but rum and roaches. So give me some food or I'm beating your arse. Well then, I'm beating your arse. You're lucky by God. It's too dark out here to whip a man's arse. But come daylight, you're gonna be out here on this beach picking up your teeth. Meantime, what's your name? Nick, eh? And you live here? By God, dry land is a sorry place for a man to live. I was passed out in some bushes when they sailed. That little fish bugger Bone was supposed to come get me, but he let him leave me behind. You know, come to think of it, the scrawny bugger gave me a bottle too. Wondered why he was being so nice. Little bastard was never nice in his life. I think he poisoned me. I'll fix him. I'll cut him some gills so he can breathe when I heave him overboard. Just a scummy little bastard on me ship. I'm so freaking hungry, me thinks I'm dying. I got to go scrub me some grub. Wouldn't be anything else. Why are you so damn interested in pirates? I was the bare knuckle boxing champion of England. Me captain hired me because I can fight. Well, some has brains, some has brawn. No offense, but uh, I'm sick of talking to you. I'm going to catch me some kind of animal and eat it. Maybe we can bang heads later. You be careful in them woods. I seen some funny looking buggers creeping around. I seen them crab buggers earlier, and I know trouble when it looks me in the face. I think they were them fellows Blackbeard was telling us about. But let me shut me big flapping jaw before I tell every secret I know. Yeah, you have turned white as a sheet and almost wet your trousers. You've got to learn how to use that sword, scrub. You got to. I can't teach nobody nothing until I get something to drink. My head is all fuzzy when I'm sober and I can't fight where the damn. But I will teach you how to fight, if you'll get me some ale. Ain't me story to tell, scrub. It's not me they're trying to kill. You want to know more? You'll have to talk to someone else. It won't be old Lyle who lets this cat out of the bag. I've been to the bar. Some crazy bugger chased me with a gun. Wouldn't even let me eat those dead rats he had out back. Said he was using them for something. And I'm asking myself, Lyle, what's he using them for? 
He refused a fellow human being in desperate need of ale. And in my book, that makes him a menace to everyone on this stinking rock. You can go up there, though, and get it for me. When you come back with some ale, I'll teach you everything you need to know. Bring me your hat, too, if you see one. Now, go on! If you've done what the captain asked, get over there and tell him. If not, get to it. No problem. Good to see you in one piece. I was afraid they'd get you before you got back here with me, Hale. Guess I owe you a lesson or two with a sword. You got your blade? When you're ready to learn to use it, you come find me. I'll be on the dock. Scrub, I see you got you a nice big sword. But I can tell by the way you're holding that pig sticker that you don't know how to use it. We better get down to business. You stand right here while I open up my sack of whoopass. I'm a master of it all, Scrub. A god among men. What do you want old Isle to teach you now? Defense, is it? Well... That is the most important thing for you to know when your scrawny arse is getting all hacked up. It's all about blocking, scrub. You move your mouse wherever you want to block and your sword will show up right there. There's three zones. Here. Here. And here. Pay attention, you gobugger. This is serious. Now, just about any fighter is going to telegraph the way he's about to strike. Everything you need to know is in the bastard's eyes, scrub. Watch me eyes. Otherwise, you won't have time to get your sword up where it's supposed to be. Now I'm gonna hit you, and you try to block me. You ready? Okay, here we go. you go pissing anyone off. What do you want old Isle to teach you now? Striking, eh? You think you want to crack some skulls? When you click the mouse button, your blade strikes the bastard. Or me, in this case, lest I'm too quick for you. You got three areas to strike. You can strike from either side, or you can strike from above his ugly noggin. Now that's a fine heavy blade you got there, and you're gonna get real tired swinging it. Pretty soon your strength will get low and your blows won't have enough power to knock the wind out of a roach. When you get tired like that, you're gonna have to rest a little. You'll want to quit hitting and sit tight. Just block until you feel strong again. If you can notice when your opponent's doing the same thing, well then you know he's tired and you might just find a weak spot. Keep that in mind. Now here's another thing. When you start a fight, it's mostly just feeling the bastard out, seeing what he's made of. But if you keep on hitting him with the same thing, then he's going to be able to write a book on you and then slam your little head inside. So mix up your strikes, 
and keep them off guard. Now, I'm just going to stand here and let you strike at me for a while. When you hit me, which I know will be rare seeing as how I'm so good, you'll notice my life indicator going down according to how much damage I've taken. I'll tell you more about that later. For now, all you need to know is that when the dial gets to zero, your opponent's dead. If this were a real fight, there'd be blood gushing everywhere. But we're just play acting right now. Just try to get my health down to nothing as fast as you can. The faster you do it, the better your score. You ready to smite me? Here goes then. before you go pissing anyone off. What do you want old Lyle to teach you now? Now, sometimes, Scrub, you may get to the situation where someone is throwing stuff at you. There's things you don't want to get hit by. For me, that's everything but food. So, you got to dodge. Left, right, and so on. Lucky for you, I've got some stuff I feel like throwing at you this very minute. So you can practice. Now you just stand there with that stupid grin on your face, and I'll commence fire. Use the left and right arrow keys on that keyboard thingy down there, and you'll lean left or right. If you're not holding down any keys, you'll snap back to the center again. I'll be throwing pretty bottles like this one at your ugly mug from three different lines of fire. Just don't stare at your own reflection in them for too long, or else. Heads up, scrubby. Prepare to dodge, scrub. island to make you some arms and legs. Clear the docks! This could get ugly. On guard, Scrubby. fighting, you might have heard old Lyle. Good job, Nick. Now I think the captain wants to talk to ye. One last piece of advice. If they ain't you, 
They're the enemy. Oh good, you're back. Any progress on what we talked about? Well, let's see what you've got. Oh, very impressive. The shark is a powerful beast. Lyle says you beat him in a fair fight. That's a big point in your favor. I must say, boy, when I told you to do those things, I really thought it would discourage you. No one thought you could actually do them. It seems I misjudged you. If you want to join my crew, you're welcome. What do you say to that? Good then. We'll be setting sail immediately. That storm has got me really worried. I'm feeling wary, boy. You've got a nervous look about you. If you're running away from something, I don't want to take on your trouble. I've got enough on my own. Who's after you? They're here? You saw them earlier? But what do you have to do with... No, no time for questions. You're definitely coming with us. Don't tell anyone else what you've told me. And that is how the ship came for you. And you climbed aboard to sail under the skull and crossbow. No one could foresee what would become of you. No one, that is, except Azul. <laughs>